Hello everyone, welcome back to the First Pitch Strike podcast presented by yours truly. And this episode we're going to go over the NL predictions and an overview, brief overview of every team just like we did the AL last week. And of course we're going to start with the NL East and who else to start with but the Nationals who had a very, very good offseason even though they lost Bryce Harper. The rotation is A+, plus, featuring Patrick Corbin, the best pitcher in baseball besides Chris Sale, so I guess the best NL pitcher, Max Scherzer, who has the some of the best stuff. I just, it's so good. I mean, it doesn't, almost doesn't get any better than this guy, but I still think Chris Sale is better. Of course, they picked up Anibal Sanchez. They have Steven Strasburg, former number one overall pick, who is very, very good. And they also got Jeremy Hellickson to end that rotation. And they are looking very solid. There's no big holes. Bullpen is really good with Sean Doolittle being one of the best closers in baseball. They got Kyle Barclaw, Tony Sipp to be that lefty out of the pen. Trevor Rosenthal will help out there. Cody Glover. It, it just all looks good. Um, but, but, but they do need some outfield depth. Considering, I don't know, Michael A. Taylor is your fourth outfielder. I don't love Michael A. Taylor. I guess that's their biggest hole, which is pretty solid. They picked up Brian Dozier to fill that second base spot. Maybe first base is somewhere they look at, but they have Ryan Zimmerman and Matt Adams. So no big concern there. Of course, we'll see how Victor Robles plays, but I'm going to assume that he's going to be a monster. Adam Eaton will be interesting, but I think he will play well if he doesn't get hurt. Maybe that's what it will cost him. Maybe they'll pick up an outfielder at the deadline. Is the only things I can really think of for them. Uh, so I have them at 96 and 66 and winning their division. Because I really don't see a way that this team isn't going to win the division. But it's the Nationals, so you never really know. And... Uh, who knows, man? They could go. They could win 110 games. How good this team is! But considering that how they are the Nationals, I'm gonna put them at 96 and 66. Now let's go to the. Some people say second winners of the off season, the New York Mets, who still have a lot of concerns on their team. Uh, most notably, their outfield, which consists of Brandon Nimmo. And Brandon Nimmo, um, you want to suspect this is hurt. Michael Conforto's okay. Juan, Lag- Juan Lagares is okay. Keon Broxton is okay. Um, starting pitching, I guess, is a not a concern with um, what's his name, <laughs> Jacob Degrom, obviously. Noah Syndergaard, Stephen Matz, uh, Zach Wheeler. And whoever their fifth star is going to be. Um, that's pretty solid. They picked up Edwin Diaz, of course, in the big Mariners trade to fill out their pen. But they also got Jerry's Familia. Robert Yelsman's got that great sinker. Justin Wilson they picked up as well, I believe. And he will fill a big need for them. Maybe they add another lefty reliever at the deadline. That's the only thing I can think of. They're set on catcher. First base is kind of a concern if... Peter Alonso and Dominic Smith don't do well. They're going to have a big hole there. But, of course, they have Judd Lowry, Jeff McNeil at second, Ahmed Rosario at short, Todd Frazier at third, and I also forgot Robinson Cano at second, so I don't know where they're going to play everyone. I guess that's a problem, but a good problem to have. And I have this team, if I already haven't said it, 86 and 76, uh, just because these are all good players, but they're not high caliber players really besides edwin diaz and um their rotation they're they're good players and they'll get get them an over 500 record but they won't make the playoffs at least this year and they'll need maybe just bring up tim tebow if you bring up tim tebow you will win one 200 games because this i love tim tebow even though he's kind of a, a weird guy you know who doesn't want to see tim tebow playing major league baseball like come on now it'll be fun Alright, and the next team I have is the Atlanta Braves. And this team didn't get that much better in the offseason. Really only added Josh Donaldson, but lost Inabal Sanchez, which is kind of big. 
but they are a pretty solid team with a pretty complete roster besides starting pitching. So Mike Fol- Fulte, I'm going to say Fulte because I can't say his name, is really their only consistent pitcher. And uh, Tukey, Tukey Toussaint is looking to be that number two guy. Uh, Sean Newcomb is could develop this year. I really hope he does. I have him on my fantasy team, so that's good. But this team just lacks solid starting pitching. Kevin Gosman, we'll see if he can return to good Kevin Gosman, which is doubtful, but you never know. And the bullpen's also a little weak. Roldo Vizcaino, Roldo Vizcaino, see if he comes back. Darren O'Day, uh, Bryce Wilson, maybe he's good. So they got some pitching holes, but everywhere else is pretty solid. Flowers and McCain are a great catching combo. Albies, Camargo, Donaldson, Freeman, and Swanson's great infield. And, of course, Acuna, also on my fantasy team. So, you know. Uh, Acuna and CRT Marquecas in the outfield with Duvall and Culberson is very good as well. So I have them at 93 and 69, but not making the playoffs. By one game, I might add. But they just have, I feel like they have too many young guys. And you're taking a risk that all of them develop. They didn't really have a division they were playing against last year. No one was good. Really nothing was happening. Uh, so that's why I won that division. I still think they do well, but not well enough to make the playoffs because the NL, besides the West, is loaded this year with great teams. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ninety 90-plus win teams, which is crazy. It's crazy. And then add another... One, two, two, three more, four more 80 win teams, which is nuts. They don't, besides a few teams, there's not really much bad teams in the NL when you have like the Rangers, the Orioles, the Royals, multiple in the, in the AL, and the NL just doesn't have that, which makes it really tough to compete. And the second to last team in the NL East is the... The Miami Marlins, who, you know, they're Jeter, you, you go, man. You do what you want, but they're not going to be good, and they're not going to be good for a long time. They finally got rid of JT Romito, and they got a great package, which included Sixto Sanchez, who I love, who's going to be a stud at the next level, and they'll come up in the next two years, but you got no real. He's your only prospect at this point. Jorge Alfaro, I don't know if he got hurt. I might be just making that up, but he's not good. Brian Anderson is the one guy on your major league team that I would count on right now. Jose Urena is your starting pitcher, so. I don't even know what to say to that. He's just terrible, scummy guy, but, you know, what can you do? We also have a guy named Victor Victor Mesa, who's like the number two prospect on the team. If you have the same first name twice in a row, you're... What are you doing? Like, what were your parents thinking? Like, come on. Victor, Victor. I mean, for notes uh, for the Marlins, I just have, like, ha, ha, ha. Because, like, this team's a joke. I have them at 70-92, which is generous. Because they have no pitching, no bullpen. Everything except Brian Anderson at the Major League level. Because they got rid of JT. So. I, I don't even... This team sucks. And I'll just... I guess... Somehow I'll move on from that to the Phillies, who had probably the best offseason in baseball this year. Going, I have them going to go 94 and 68, and I'm going to have them be the number, I guess, tied. I don't know who would win it, but the number one wildcard spot tied with another team. That I'll go over later. 94 and 68, right? I think I've already said that like 10 times, but it's okay. Uh, I do have some concerns, though, which is basically what this is. Um, well, actually, let me go over um, what they did this offseason because there was so much that went on and way too much. I have to go over. So they picked up a lot of guys. They got, uh, first of all, David Robertson, which flew under the radar, which was a great move for them. and it help, It's going to help them a lot in their bullpen, which they desperately needed. Uh, they also picked up, was it Jose Alvarez or was it someone else? They traded a reliever to the Angels and got a reliever back. So, kudos to you. Of course, they traded Sixto Sanchez and Jorge Alfaro to get JT Real Muto, uh, which 
probably second best catcher in the league, best catcher in the league, whatever you want to say. Him and Yasmani and maybe Wilson go, Wilson Contreras, that is, go, you know, up and down with me. And I don't think you can define one catcher as being the best in baseball right now. I think it's pretty divided. Uh, but they're good there. Uh, they also have, well, they have him as number 10, but I'm pretty sure he's number 11. I might be wrong there. Who knows? Um, infield looks great. Michael Franco, Hernandez, Hoskins, Kingery, and Segura. Of course, they got Segura from the Mariners for J.P. Crawford, who they just don't think will develop at the rate they need him to because they want to win now. Uh, they also traded for Andrew McCutcheon. No, they signed Andrew McCutcheon to a larger deal. Larger, not large in comparison to the other guy they signed, but fills that outfield hole that Nick Williams just wasn't doing, and he adds another righty bat to this lineup that desperately needs one in the outfield, a righty in the outfield. And, of course, they signed big Bryce Harper, who I think is a fantastic player, and he's not overpaid. I think the Phillies got a steal. Under 27, was under 27 million a year for a top 15 guy in baseball. That's only like 26. Have him for the rest of his career. He can opt out. You can't trade him, which is people don't like, but super solid player. No complaints there. Great signing. Anyone that signed him, I was going to be happy about. But there are big concerns in the pitching department that include back end starting. So you have Noah. Arietta, and that's it. Uh, you got a group of Pavetta, Vince Velasquez, maybe will start. Who knows? Um, Zach Eflin, and, and that's about it. I mean, it, it's, t- it's tough. You don't have that many good guys. Maybe a starting pitcher at the deadline is the move for you, or maybe sign Dallas Keuchel if you have any money, which I don't think you do. But Dallas Keuchel on a one-year deal would make a lot of sense. Craig Kimbrell on a one-year deal would make a lot of sense because you're back in, you're at, your end of your rotation is pretty solid with Sir Anthony Dominguez, David Robertson, and maybe if Pat Nechek does well. But, you know, your middle inning guys could use some work. We don't really know how well they're going to do. All of them are untested. And that's a big part of why this team isn't going to win the division because it, position player-wise, there's not much experience. You know, you got... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve guys. Twelve of your, uh, twelve of your position players are all born in the nineties. Besides, your only position player not born in the nineties is Andrew McCutcheon, and one leader on uh position player side isn't gonna do it. I think you need to pick up a veteran before the deadline, or maybe after, or before that to help. You know, get this team over the hump. That's what the Astros did with Justin Verlander. That's what the Red Sox did, I guess, with Steve Pierce, even J.D. Martinez, you could say. An older guy to help lead these young, this young group to the promised land. And if they do that, I think they can win much more than the 94 games I project. But if they can't, then they got some problems. Yeah. So, so that's my NL East to go over. I have the Nats in first with 96 wins. The Phillies... Getting the wild card spot with 94, the Braves going 93, Mets 86, and Marlins with 70. As the Celtics just lost to the Hornets. <laughs> wow, they suck. Okay, that's a whole different even sport, so I won't even mention that. But let's move on to the NL Central. Uh, first, we have the Cubs going 93 and 69 and actually missing the playoffs. Uh, I just have too many concerns about this team. Way, way too many concerns. Uh, but I have them winning 93 games, so they were one game out. Um, they could even play another game 163. wouldn't surprise me. But starting pitching, again, is a problem. Jose Quintana hasn't shown he can be a good starting pitcher with the Cubs. Lester is pretty solid. Hendricks is pretty solid. Hamels, we'll see how he performs his first I believe it's first full season, maybe a second. I'm not 100% sure. You, you, I, <laughs> I don't know what that was, but we'll see how you can perform this year. I don't think it'll be good because he's either going to get hurt or he's going to stink or it's going to be both because he's washed up and they signed him to way too much money. Bullpen is okay. You had some good guys. You got Brad Bratch, Brad Bratch, Xavier Sedano. 
Tony Barnett, Brandon Kinsler, Mike Montgomery, and Pedro Ostro, who needs to put his hat on straight. Catching situation is great. You got Wilson Contreras. You have, of course, you got Javier Baez, the most overrated player in baseball. Uh, and you got Brizzo. Uh, Anthony Rizzo and Chris Bryant. We'll see how they bounce back. And I'm really concerned. I, I think Chris Bryant will have a great season. But Anthony Rizzo is a guy that concerns me a lot. Because he could just have a, a slumping season. He could not hit well. You never know. He's, his team coming off a World Series win a few years ago just hasn't really looked the same as they did that year. Kind of lost all that magic and that drive to win another World Series. Because they feel like they already got one. Outfield's got some big problems, though. That's where the that's some concern. They just sent Ian Hep down because uh, he sucks. All he's done is hit one home run in the beginning, the first pitch of the year. That's basically all he did. Hayward can't hit. He can field one of the greatest fielders in the league right now, but he can't hit. Schwarber, who knows what he's going to do. He could hit 230 or he could hit 280. He's, he's totally up and down for me. And Almora, is Almora really going to be a starter? No. Is Mark Zaganis going to be a starter? No. You, you need outfield p- outfield bad, and maybe you start breaking down the team like they were rumored they were going to. They said they might open, anyone was open to trade. I think that's the time, because you don't have the best prospects coming up. I say, I think you keep Bryant, you keep Baez, and you keep Contreras, but I think everyone else could go. Maybe keep Carl Edwards, who I forgot to mention. Uh, but I don't want, I don't really want to trade Rizzo because I feel like he's kind of the hardest team. So I put off trading him as long as I could. But see what I can get for Hayward, which probably isn't anything. See what I can get for Schwarber, Lester, Yu Darvish, Chatwood, anyone really. Um, but I think you really got to keep Bryant, Baez, and Contreras. Those are just three guys you can't lose. You just don't want to trade guys that good. It just hurts to do it. But they might have to in the end because that could happen. But I think the Cubs disappoint and miss the playoffs for the first time in a couple of years. And next, I'm going to move on to the reigning NL Central champion, the Milwaukee Brewers, who I have winning the division again, barely, at 95 and 67. And they really only have one concern, and that is starting pitching. Um, we're first gonna I'll just go over why they don't have any other concerns anywhere else as I pull up the roster real quick. Um, so in the outfield, of course, you have the MVP in Christian Yelich, a stud in Lorenzo Cain, and a stud in Ryan Braun. And Ben Gamble is pretty good depth for you out there. First base, of course, you have Aguilar. Second is Hernan Perez and Travis Shaw. As short, you have Arcia and Travis Shaw. And third, you have Mike Moustakas and Travis Shaw. All great players, all championship caliber. That's a championship caliber IL. It is. No question about it. And catcher, you had a great signing and signing Yasmani Grandal. It's going to be great for you. You have Eric Kratz, Manny Pena backing him up, who are all, you know, that's a champ. If Sandy Leon. Blake Swihart and Christian Vasquez can win a World Series. That that backstop can too. It's come on, and they have one of the best bullpens in baseball, I think, with Josh Hader, uh, Brandon Woodruff, who might get some starts. We'll have to see. Corey Nebel's out for the year, I believe, which really hurts because now they're gonna have to fill a bullpen spot. But they also have um, Jeremy Jeffers, who we'll see after that horrendous postseason performance. If he can bounce back, he is a little older. I think he's in his mid-30s. But all these guys performed really well last year. Alex Claudio, I think... <clears throat> I th- Sorry, I think it's going to be really good. Uh, but starting pitching. I, I, you look down the roster, and there's no pitcher that you're scared of. Starting pitcher, that is. Of course, there's Hader. But uh, Chase Anderson... Ulysses Chassin, I think is how you say his name. Jimmy Nelson, Brandon Woodruff. None of those got none of those names stand out, and that really concerns me. But I think this, this their hitting will propel them, and their bullpen will propel them to a, another division win. But I think their starting pitching will hinder them to win a World Series because the last few World Series winners, if you've looked at them, have had the best starting pitching 
one of the best, some of the best starting pitching in baseball. Of course, the Red Sox, you had Sale, Price, Ovaldi, Porcel, Erod, who are an amazing starting five. Of course, you have Verlander, Keiko, McCullers, and uh, Morton, and uh, another guy for the Astros, I can't think of his name. That pitch started a lot, I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, the Cubs, of course, you had Lester, who's great. Hendricks was unbelievable that season. I believe they had the Cy Young winner. I'm not sure. Unless that was Lester. Um, I right, will check that out real quick. But y- you get my point where you need over. Oh, um, um, you need great starting pitching to win the World Series. It's actually Max Scherzer, but it's a, it's whatever. And if if you don't get great starting pitching, it's just not going to happen. And so I think they either get bounced in the first or the second round. and I think the regular season won't be indicative of how good this team really is unless they get that future star starting pitcher. If that means trading Keston Huria, that's even how he's pronounced his name, then so be it. But you need that starting pitcher because you're not in a better position to win than right now. You're not going to be in a better position to win the next 10 years than right now with how good this offense is. I think Yelich ba- bounces back if I haven't mentioned that already. Sorry, spaced me. Uh, the third team in the NL Central is the Cincinnati Reds. As I'm taking a long time with this video, <laughs> or podcast, I guess. Uh, Cincinnati Reds, I have them going 82 and 82, which is no record, so I'll have them going 82 and 80, just over 500, given the benefit of the doubt. Uh, of course, there are, they made the one big move acquiring Yasiel Puig, Matt Kemp, and Alex Wood for the Dodgers. Um, not giving up a crazy amount for him, which I think was great, which solidifies their outfield, gives them Kemp, Puig, and Winker. Maybe, uh, maybe, who which I want to see is Michael Lorenzen taking some reps in the outfield, which would be really cool. But they do have some infield issues now, as Scooter Jeanette's out for two to three months, which might mean that Jose Iglesias will have to play either second or short, and they might move Peraza to short, who's a great young shortstop. Suarez is a great third baseman. Vado, of course, is Joy Vado, even though he had it down here last year. They have Tucker Barnhart and Kurt Caselli catching behind the plate. Uh, but their starting pitching is, concerns me a lot. Uh, Luis Castillo is basically their only good starting pitcher, I guess. Tanner Roark and Alex Wood could be great. Sonny Gray, they sound a good deal, but... They got, they're like the Yankees. They have a bunch of mid-level starting pitching. That's what I'd classify this as. Besides Luis Severino, who... It, Luis Severino is just so tough. I don't even know how I got to the Yankees, but Luis Severino really only is a one-half pitcher. His whole career, he's only been a one-half pitcher. Where he pitches well in the first half and just dies in the second half. Just dies. Goes down the tank. And if he can stay healthy... And pitch well, then he'll be a Cy Young candidate. But right now, he's just a mid-level guy. And same for these guys. There's just no one that is crazy besides Luis Castillo, I guess, who's still really young. Bullpen's okay with Michael Lorenzen. <laughs> I don't know what he's going to He can hit, but I, I don't know how that's going to work. Of course, they have Rasiel Iglesias, who had a bad year last year. David Hernandez, Jared Hughes, and their Garrett, Zach Duke, which I liked. I think that, that was a good signing. I guess Matt Weisler, but uh, this team just doesn't have the talent to win more than 85 games, and I gave them the benefit of the doubt with 82, uh, because I don't think they're a bad team, but with a loaded NL, it's just going to be tough for them to win a lot of games. And uh, I also want to talk about Nick Sanzel, who's on my fantasy team, and got demoted to AAA, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I don't, really don't know, I'm starting to blackout here because I've been talking for 24 minutes without <laughs> stopping. I'm staring at the black screen and I don't know what's happening. Sorry, getting off track. Nick Senzel. It's hot in here, man. <laughs> Nick Senzel. Uh, if they let him stay for a little longer, they'll have an extra year of control, which is what they're trying to do. But I really want to see him called up. I think he can be a productive MLB hitter. And with Scooter Jeanette out, I think this is the right place to put him. Or if you want to put him in the outfield, uh, that could also be an option, which I wouldn't mind because I think that would work out really well for them. But we will find that out as the season goes on. Maybe they trade for a starting pitcher as the season goes on. Who knows? Who really knows? 
Because whatever I say here, whatever anyone else tells you, they don't really know. They're just making it up. Like, I'm just making it up right now. And I've gone on, like, five tangents in this video, and this is going to be the sixth. I haven't been counting. I'm just guessing. That anyone that tells you anything about sports, they're just guessing. Any prediction is just a guess. And so, you know, they're never going to be perfect. I'm obviously going to be wrong. None of these guys are going to win the games that I picked. But this is just my opinion, so suck it. No. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying at this point. Let's move on to the Cardinals, who I have going 94 and 68 and getting that second wild card spot after having a phenomenal offseason, and who definitely won the trade with the Dimebacks, not even close, after signing an extension. That was really my. Oh, the <laughs> Celtics went on a, a 5 to 30 run on the Hornets to lose that game. Great. Uh, after they. Traded for Paul Goldschmidt, and I just wanted them, if they got signed Paul Goldschmidt to an extension, sorry, I couldn't get those words out, then they would have won the trade, and um, and they did. Uh, so, good amount of money. A lot of extensions lately, so that's something to look out for. I think Anthony Rendon's probably next for an extension. Who knows? Uh, but I think Paul Goldschmidt's going to win MVP. That's my MVP prediction, by the way, um, if you wanted to know. And um, they also have some good starting pitching, but it's not great. Uh, we'll see if Jack Flaherty will come back and have a great sophomore campaign or if he will have a sophomore slump. But I really don't think he will. I think he'll ha who's also on my fantasy team, by the way. Just saying. I had a great draft. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Miles Mikolas, great starting pitcher. I don't think he'll be nearly as good as he was last year. But I think he'll have around the 3-2, 3-3 ERA. Maybe if he can get his FIP under 3, I think that'll be really solid for him. Uh, maybe ex-FIP under 3-5. Who knows? Um, but really, besides that, there's no great starting, pitchings on this, starting pitching on this team. Carlos Martinez is a wild card who could be returned to form or could be just horrendous, which I think the latter. Adam Wainwright, got, he's 6'7", 235, and he is weird I man i don't know he is someone that is also kind of a wild card michael walker is a wild card alex Reyes is a wild card all guys that could have phenomenal seasons or be trash i didn't think i'd be using that word in this video but there i am uh bullpen of course they have the flame throwing jordan hicks uh they signed andrew miller and maybe carlos martinez is re relegated to the bullpen dominic leon solid but they Probably will have to trade for a reliever by the deadline. They have Yadi and Wieners catching, which is very solid. They have Carpenter probably at third, De Young at short, Goldie at first, and uh, a pipe platoon between Wong and Jerko. Jerko. And uh, in the outfield, Harrison Bader is a great defender. Dexter Fowler is nothing. Jose Martinez is a great, is a decent hitter. Ozuna is probably solid. Who had a disappointing year last year, which is kind of sad about. Yeah, I was disappointed in this disappointing year. Yeah. And um, I think this team is really solid. I think they had a great offseason, got some guys back, got some new guys, and will win 94 games. But they do need some outfield help. Hopefully they will get some, and they do need some bullpen help. Hopefully they'll get some. And to finish off, <laughs> you know, Central... We're going to talk about the Pittsburgh Pirates, who I really only have one thing to say to them. Spend some money. I, owners, you are so incompetent. Just spend money. This team is so close to being so good. And it's hard for me to say that right now because I'm so sad this team won't spend money. Your infield is terrible. Besides Adam Frazier and maybe Colin Moran and Kevin Newman, which is three of the four, but, you know, they're all mid-level guys. This team could be so... Your starting pitching is so good. And your bullpen is pretty good as well. But you won't spend money. And it's really annoying me. Just... You didn't spend any. You spent like 700000 And it's not because... They're... Like, there's no good free agents. The owners just don't spend money, period. They haven't for years and years and years. And I just hate them for that. But look, you have a starting rotation of Tyon Williams... Uh, uh, Nick Kingham, maybe Chris Archer. They're good, and you have a bullpen. Felipe Vasquez. Oh, they also have Joe Musgrove is going to start. Is great. Felipe Vasquez, Keone Kila, Kyle Crick, Jordan Lyles. I mean, it's good. Yes, yeah, Cervelli catching, 
But you have a, a decent infield, actually. You have Dickerson, Marte, Polanco. That's a great outfield, but they won't spend money to get a great player. And they have the cap. They have so much cap, but they won't spend money. That's the only thing you need to do. This team could win the World Series in three years if they spent money. It's just so sad. They, they just need a star. If they get one, two stars, this team could be really good. But I have them going 76 and 86 because they won't spend money and put them lower. And to recap the NL Central, I have the Brewers winning it with 95, the Cardinals coming in second, taking the wild card spot with 94, Cubs at 93, Reds at 82, and Pirates at 76. Another great division with no real weakness, no real weak link besides maybe the Reds, but I have them as fourth. And with 30 minutes, which I finished off last time, so taking a little longer, we're going to talk about the NL West. I've taken 15 minutes per division. Whoa! And first, I have the division-winning Dodgers, who I think are the best team in baseball, at least talent-wise. We'll have to see as the year goes on. But right now, they're first in my power rankings, I believe. And um, I have them winning 102 games because they are really, 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 really good. Really, really good. Um, of course, starting pitching, Walker Buehler, who, who's also on my fantasy team. Uh, Clayton Kershaw starting the year injured, but that's okay. Hunjin Ryu is their uh, opening day starter. Ross Stripling, Julio Urias, Kenta Maeda. I mean, the list goes on. Rich Hill. Those are all potential starting pitchers, and those will all be top three starting pitchers on most teams in the MLB. You go to the bullpen, it's still solid, adding Joe Kelly. Ross Stripling can come out of the pen, probably will. Ken Lee Jansen, Yubi Garcia, Dylan Floro, Tony Singrani, Pedro Baez, Scott Alexander, who's got the best one of the best mustaches in sports. You got a good lefty righty mix. You're just you're in such a good position right now. And if you don't win a World Series, that'll be one of the biggest disappointments in a long time. It, this team is so good. Austin Barr and Russell Martin at the catching position. You have Bellinger probably at first, maybe the outfield. I don't know why they list him as an infielder. He's definitely a center fielder. But he might be relegated to first with the A.J. Pollock signing. You also have Max Muncy who can play anywhere. Seager will coming back. Chris Taylor, Justin Turner, who's one of the most underrated players in the MLB. Top 25 player, easy. David Freeze. In the outfield, you have maybe you need an outfielder. Maybe you just put Cody Bellinger out there and kind of solves your problem. Jack Peterson, AJ Pollock, Kike Hernandez. The only thing I'd see is just you need one more outfielder. Maybe you just pick that up at the deadline if you have any more prospects left. Maybe trade a starting pitcher or something. But you need an outfielder. Hopefully you get one on a long-term deal, but you probably won't because that's tough. And so that's why I have this team winning 102 games because there's just nothing really wrong with them. And... The Red Sox just kind of exposed that they were just tired towards the end of the year. And the Red Sox... Well, I don't know. Scratch that. They weren't really tired, but... The Red Sox were just the best team in baseball that year. And they kind of showed it off in the playoffs, but... This team should win the World Series. And I think they will. That's, that'd be my prediction. They haven't won since, what, 88? Something like that? They'll win it this year. Third, three straight World Series losses would be pretty funny, though. I don't even care who they who beats them unless it's the Yankees. So, one second. <coughs> All right, let's keep going. Uh, next team in the NL West, which I think is the worst division in the NL, which is loaded with teams. I have the Giants going seventy-four and eighty-eight. We really don't have much. Really don't. Um, I think that Derek Rodriguez is going to blossom as a starter. And their starting pitching is really the only thing that they have. And it's like, I don't want the New York Giants roster. Ugh. Google. All right, here we go. And um, so, yeah, you got Derek Rodriguez, Matt Bum, Jeff Samarjo will probably be traded. I hope Mad Bum's traded, traded to a real team. Drew Pomeranz can start. Uh, bullpen's pretty, pretty awful besides Mark Melanson. It's pretty bad. Maybe Will Smith is, has another good year. Posey, we'll see if he can stay healthy. Crawford's great defensively, but that's about it. Evan Longoria is still alive somehow. Pablo Sandoval is somehow still in this league. Joe Panic has regressed. And they just literally, literally don't have an outfield. They have three guys. Steven Duggar, Michael Reed, and Mac Williamson. The only guy that could possibly be good is Mac Williamson because he's huge. He's 6'4", 237. But he's getting older. 
and it seems just has too many concerns and won't be that good. So I'm trying to go with these a little quicker because that took a little too long with the first two divisions, but they have better teams. Uh, Padres, Padres, Padres. I have them going 80 and 82 uh, because I'm going to believe, I'm going to assume that they're going to bring up a ton of their starting pitching prospects like Chris Paddock, who is probably going to be their ace for this year, and not saying something. That man is so good. I was, I've was i been watching him in spring training. Red Sox hit him up a little bit, but he is unbelievable, and he will be a starting pitching star. So remember the name Chris Paddock because, oh my. But besides that, they really don't have starting pitching. Joey Lucchesi and maybe... Um, who's the other guy? Joey Lucchesi and... And... One other guy I'm thinking of, Robbie Irwin, maybe I'm thinking of. Who knows? Uh, bullpen's pretty actually solid with Craig Stammen and Kirby Yates ending it. Adam Warren looks good. Aaron Loop, Phil Maton, so Jacob Nix. And they have a bunch of other starting pitching prospects coming up that I think if they do well, this team will be unbelievable. Of course, you have Mejia, who hasn't proved to me he can hit on a major league level yet, but he's still young, born in 95. A little undersized, but we'll see how he plays. Infield's kind of gross, but they have four infielders. So you got Hosmer at first, Kinsler at second, Manny at third, and Urias at short. So I guess you got a full infield. Of course, Manny Machado's signing. Uh, kind of overpaid for a guy that has a bad attitude. Said they wouldn't even win the division if you saw that video. So that was pretty funny. But... I don't think this team will be is really ready yet, and I think everyone knows that. In the outfield, you have pretty a ton of outfielders. I think you need to trade a few because you have Manny Margot, Will Myers, Fran Mil Reyes, Hunter Renfro, and Jose Perello. Those are five starting caliber outfielders, and you only need four. Not to mention Franchi Cordero and Travis Schenkowski. That's seven possible starting outfielders. So I say you trade two or three and send one down. Um. I think you keep Manny Margot up, you keep Will Myers, and you keep Fran Mil Reyes, but you trade Hunter Renfro, Jose Perella, and tra and you set down Franchi Cordero, and you keep Travis Schenkowski as your four. Because he's got a little more experience. So that'd be my idea, my plan. But who knows what they're going to do. Right now I have them winning 80 games because... I'm assuming their starting pitching prospects will do amazing at the next level, and their bullpen's going to carry them to a lot more wins. They have great position players, but they're just not there yet. Rockies are going to be my disappointing team of this year. I have them winning 81 games, going 500. So again, this NL is just stacked, and it's going to be tough for teams to win a lot of games uh, because there's just so many guys. Uh, but the Rockies pitching is scary because they're playing cores, and besides... Freeland and Marquez, no one else really stands out. Uh, you lost Adam Alavino, so there goes your closer. You still have Wade Davis, but who knows how's he gonna, how he's going to pitch. John Gray looks horrible. Uh, Scott Oberg looks okay. Sung Wong O looks okay. Cincinnati looks okay. So pitching is a big problem. Maybe you just tank and trade Freeland. Or maybe you trade Marquez, who knows. Uh, Ionetta, Murphy, and Walters is not a good catching combo right there but catching combos have proved that you you don't need a great catching combo to win that many games i think that's been proven in the infield you have of course nolan you signed daniel murphy you have ryan mcmahon ian desmond Trevor story so your second base shortstop and third is all set all great players first base is a little interesting see what they do there in the outfield they really only have one with charlie blackman so that's going to hinder them Tremendously, David Dahl is not a real outfielder. Just no, he's not that good. Tapia, we'll see if he can play well. I'm really inter interested to see if they call Brendan Rodgers up. Um, where he'd play, God knows if he can play outfield. <laughs> good for him because their infield is uh, completely filled. So maybe they trade Daniel Murphy. He signed Nolan to an extension, so you're not going to trade him. But we'll see. Um, We'll see where that happens. Uh, so I've been winning 81 games. I just have too many concerns about too many concerns. I'm sorry if that sounded weird. But I'm winning that many games. So games too many times today. 
we're gonna keep going. We're about to hit 40 minutes. I've been talking 40 minutes. I've given myself a headache. If I keep doing tangents like this, it's gonna last forever. And the final team is the Arizona Diamondbacks. So I have going 70 and 92 because they don't really have anything besides Zach Greinke. You signed Adam Jones, you traded Paul Goldschmidt, and you got Carson Kelly, who's a great catcher, a wonderful, wonderful catcher. And you got um, Luke Weaver, who had my fantasy team last year, and it was buns, buns, horrible. Outfield is poor. Uh, that, that was just me just assuming they were going to be bad. David Peralta is a great hitter and a decent fielder. Sousa Jr. has potential. And Adam Jones is a solid player. Infield is bad. Eduardo Escobar and Jake Lamb. Maybe Wilmer Flores play well, but too many question marks there. Catching, just ignore that because Carson Kelly's not really ready yet. And pitching besides Zach Ranke and maybe Archie Bradley, who's not that good. Maybe Robbie Ray. This team isn't that good. Uh, there's no star. There's no real talent. This team isn't that good. I'm going to try to end my video here. Maybe you trade Grinky at the deadline. Sorry, that's that'd be my suggestion. Uh, so let's go over the NL West again. Just to review, I have the Dodgers winning at 102. I have the Rockies coming in second with 81. Padres in three with 80. Giants four with 74. And D-backs last with 70 wins. And that'll be my video at 41 minutes. If you like this video, you're probably watching on YouTube because that's the only place I'm going to post it. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe if you made it this far. What are you doing with your life? You shouldn't be watching this for 41 minutes. Go watch a real podcast. But I've had fun making it, so that's what I'm going to keep doing them. Sorry if I talk too fast. That's just how I am, so let's just slow it down. Uh, and uh, see ya. Bye.